Alright, 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 what's up everybody and welcome back. I am so happy to yet again be casting another Bly game. Why? Because in an age when Saril and Reyna are dominating the Zerg scene and showing how to play proper Zerg strategies, there aren't that many Zergs who are going away from those norms. Sure, Dark gets a bit creative sometimes and does just straight whack stuff, at least for being at the tippity top of the pro scene, but there are a few players as creative as this man. Bly is an absolute legend when it comes to bringing out just weird, crazy strategies. And already he's sending a very dirty drone out on the map up against Hellraiser in the bottom left. Now, I've recently been looking for so many more creative Zerg players out there. So uh, open invite, by the way, if you are watching this and you're a Grandmaster player who does feel they play very creative strategies. Maybe I'll make an exception for Masters 1, but uh, feel free to send me a replay. Um, you know, send that over to me on Discord or email or whatever. And uh, I'd, I'd love to find more Zergs. I've been harassing Bly. And saying, please send me some more replays, mate. Uh, you know, you, surely you got some good games on the ladder. You know what he said? He said, I actually haven't been playing ladder at all. I'm literally completely inactive. I'm working as a full-time project manager for a game dev right now. I don't get a chance to ladder. I just show up when there's a big tournament and that's it. And I'm like, really? How are you still so good? And he's like, yeah. I mean, I, I, he's like, oh, I don't think I'm very good. I, you know, I'm just trying my best, but I don't really get to practice. So you probably won't see any more games from me until uh, the regionals come around for the next season, which is a few months away. So this is going to be the last Blycast for a while, I would imagine. But already starting off with a hatchery block. We saw one of these recently. He's a master of this. Now, I got to remember, this is a third hatchery. You got a hatchery at home, at this hatchery, then a gas and a pool. But the probe pull is enough. That seven probes, which is the perfect amount to cancel it very early. So Bly is not going to be able to let this finish. He's going to cancel it. Ooh, and he cancels it at the very last second. Gets an Evo chamber down. That costs way less. And the reason you place the Evo is after building a hatchery for that long, there's just enough creep underneath it to put the Evo chamber down. That will have to get canceled as well, though. So this is a pretty good shutdown for Hellraiser. It does delay his Nexus. And you got to realize Bly actually gets a lot of the money back. He's only spent 93 minerals, but it did slow down his spawning pool. And oh, Hellraiser thought it was done. He thought it was done, but he didn't spread the probes out. You need to spread those probes to block the follow-up hatchery. His probes go back to Vine. Now they pull back to the front. Bly, you absolute bastard. He's being such a nuisance. Hellraiser's forced to take a second gas and a second pylon. Finally, he's going to be able to clear this up and start a nexus in the near future, but he's losing so much mining time from these probes. And... Hatchery Evo, Hatchery Evo. It is a four times block. And at this point, Hellraiser is not even trying to clean it up. He's literally just rallying adepts across the map. The drone, if that, that's a Captain Dickhead, if I've ever seen one, is still alive. Comes back for another block, doesn't quite get it. Hellraiser finally gets the Nexus up. But that drone has done so much work for the Zerg. Now, like I said, this cost him a lot of opportunity cost. It slowed down his sporting pool. His queens still aren't ready at two minutes 50. And Zerglings will get picked off by these adepts one at a time. Has to do a spore crawler trick. So far, not much damage. But there's another adept right behind it and that's where things can get very scary adept does cancel the shade now usually in this scenario what you want to do is you want to bring both queens to the front i would say and use the zerglings in the main but he doesn't really have enough zerglings to deal with this and uh oh he moves out two adepts do come in okay big problem for bly right now he's still got a drone hiding in the base is he gonna build a hatchery there i don't even know if that would be worth it and a queen and a few zergs going after these adepts, but they finish the shade. Oh, great micro for Hellraiser. Hellraiser knows he needs to get damage done, and he is finding it. He gets four drones. The drones do get a bit of a citizen's arrest. Five workers for two adepts, though. Very important. If that didn't happen, Bly was about to explode in income and get way out of control. Now this buys time for Hellraiser to get the Nexus up and actually stabilize. This is what I love about Bly, is he's done a hatchery block many times before. He's done 12 pool plus hatchery block in the wall to try and break the wall down. But there's so many variations. It's like, oh, you did a proxy hatch, you did a hatch block. Wow, we've seen that before. I haven't seen a hatchery into an Evo, into a hatchery in another Evo. I've never seen a drone block at a Nexus four times in a row like that before. That was actually something very <laughs> unique. And this is the beauty of the way Bly plays, because he's constantly looking for a way to do more damage. He's finding these little angles where he's just like, oh, being a bit of a dickhead, mate. Uh, just being a bit of a, a bit of a cheeky dickhead. Uh, Void Ray's gonna rally out for Hellraiser. That's like the super safe unit. Use it to clean up overlords and push back. And because there's two overlords on this side of the map, that's actually pretty bad for Bly, I would say. He's gonna come in and see it now and maybe try to run these overlords away a little, but pack of adepts coming forward. He does have enough Zerglings to deal with it. Bly is up four workers, but he's got very little gas mining, not a lot of tech right now, and his third hatchery isn't quite finished. The Void Ray's gonna force a lot of overlords out of him as well, or he will be supply blocked. And Hellraiser going for an Oracle after the Void Ray, a Pylon, and it looks like a Nexus going down on the third base. So just trying to get back to anything approximating a normal game is Hellraiser right now. And I gotta say, 
that's elusive. When you're playing Bly, most players, they don't really respect aggressive players like Bly for the most part. Some of them do, but it's, even then it's a begrudging respect. And the reason is whenever anyone plays in such a disruptive style, they're never, people, people always feel like they're, they don't beat me when I'm playing my best. You know, if I just played better, this would never work. Of course, that kind of ignores the whole little factor of the whole playstyle is around putting you in deep water in weird situations where you're kind of forced to not play your best. So it is always kind of funny when people get angry at, you know, oh my god, I can't believe I lost to this this player or someone like that. Now, I do think Bly is a little bit more solid than someone like Haas, for instance, but Oracle comes in, gets a drone. Voidray is going after the Extractor, which to be fair, he doesn't have a lot of gas income right now, so getting the Extractor would have been pretty nice. I wouldn't have minded Prismatic Alignment turning on. Voidray does beat a Queen 1v1. But Hellraiser doesn't want to hang around and then find out other queens are coming. Adept's coming forward. Whoa, this is a super late Resonating Glaives. Hellraiser's hoping to catch Bly being greedy right now. This is a big commitment. Adept shading in towards the natural. Plenty of Zerglings on top of it. So the reason this is such a crazy move is this is like you're going to be up on three bases. Pretty beastly economy by the time that comes in. And oh, the Oracle's come in. Get three drones. So you've committed to a Void Ray, a couple of Oracles, which are all kind of like harassment style units. Now you're committing to Mass Adept. This is a massive commitment to three gate Glaive Adept. Already 12 Adepts out. Glaives is about 40 seconds away. So he could just commit to 12 and then transition. And it looks like that's going to be the play. Hellraiser will go Robo, no doubt, for something like Immortals behind this. Oracle's getting massive damage. Bly, where are your Queens, mate? His Queens all got pulled away. Bly with a big mistake there, losing seven workers. And I feel like even after disrupting his opponent at the start, it might... Oh, no, he doesn't block the Adepts. The Evo Chamber doesn't get down in time. This is a disaster for Bly. Bly is in big doo-doo right now. But his Lings are running in at the same time. His Lings are running in at the same time. He does force a recall, I think, of the Oracles. But the Adepts have already killed 17 workers. He did not pull those away quick enough. He's got to run these drones. He's got to get these drones out of here. The Roach will tank for a little bit, but only for so long. The Lings are on hold position, trying to take out as many of these probes as they can. The Oracles are out of energy, which means they can't clean it up. Bly's still being very annoying. He shift clicks all of those probes, so he will take out every single probe on that third base, but he is down to 33 drones, and the Adepts are not done yet. These Roaches desperately trying to hold on. Oh, nice Evo block there. Very nice Evo block, but the Adepts are just going to come around the other side. A second Evo block. Bly hides inside that mineral line. That was actually super cute. Forces the cancel there. That Evo does get broken down on the right, so he cancels the one on the left. But I think making the best of a pretty bad situation, those Adepts still going after these drones. They get one more. 27 workers killed. This game has turned into an absolute poop shoot. Remember what I was saying about you just want the game to be clean? I guess that's not Hellraiser's choice. Hellraiser committed hard to this Glaive Adept. I think he said, no, I'm not going to make the game clean. I'm going to punish you because I know your defense is not as good as your offense. I want to be the one in the driver's seat. And he finds massive, massive damage. 33 drone kills right now. Still has a Void Ray, which I think he should probably bring back to try and defend any Roach counterattack. Of course, Burrow starts up. Bly the Mad Dog is like, hmm... Not an ideal scenario. Make Burrow. He's actually back up to 57 drones, so he's redroned pretty quickly in the midst of this as well. Void Ray is there in the main. There's still only five queens out, and there's still a Void Ray and two Oracles. And that's going to be a gas kill, which remember, it's not only 25 minerals, but it's also the drone that built it. So essentially, you're killing a drone and an extra 25 minerals worth of value, as well as delaying the gas mining. Oracles fly in. Queens are well prepared. Roach is getting ready for a run by on the left, and Bly's actually holding that drone key down hard, man. And this is what I love about Bly. I think of him as a guy who often just sits on 50 drones all game for a long time. But he takes some damage. He bounces back, explodes the economy, drops a spire. He's getting burrow. He's positioning sneakily. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Hellraiser doesn't see either of these guys. So, so we've got a two-pronged Roach attack getting ready right now. He's waiting for Roach speed. The attack goes in on the right and the left at the same time. So Hellraiser sees the one on the right first. Those Roaches are going to run in, but this is a distraction. The whole army gets pulled down here. And those Roaches are going to run in the natural. Oh my god, he's got to warp in right now. Okay, quickly warps in some Stalkers. These Roaches going down behind the third. The Roaches take out one of the Stalkers that warped in. Another one does go down. The Roaches getting right in the mineral line. And Burrow's finished as well. He's going to drop some units to try to deal with this. But those Roaches have Burrow. Let's see if Hellraiser realizes. He might not be watching right now. Does he notice? He doesn't. He would have started an Observer. If he realized Burrow was there, I'm pretty sure he would have started an odds. He's going to drop the Immortal in the main as well. Those Roaches are going to unburrow. Take out a couple of probes. Three Roaches is enough to one-shot probes. Okay, he starts to chrono an Observer, but it's rallied out to the right side. Going for a desperate counter push. Hellraiser is like, what the hell is this cheeky BS? The Roaches unburrow in the main again. They're actually doing pretty well versus the Zealots. Okay, but you got to watch out. That's a pretty decent army of stalker adept coming in i guess there's plenty of roaches behind it but the third base is in trouble 
drones starting to go down. They're going to turn and fight right now. More roaches just right in on the third base. These roaches still there are oh, borrowed. The observer came out, but it rallied away to the front. Hellraiser's is too distracted. He's not dealing with the roaches right now. He's trying to warp in more stalkers on the front. He feels like he can't swap into defense. He needs to find a way to punish Bly here on the offense, but it's not working out. The observer is going to come back and clean up those roaches, but the roaches in the main are still ready to unburrow. Bly's looking for an opportunity while he's diving there at the same time. He unburrows on the third base. Those roaches are starting to take out those zealots or at least trade with them. That roach tunneling claws is finished, so it tries to get away. These roaches, they're going to try and hide as well. Okay, this game's turning to, to, to a very poopy situation very quickly for Hellraiser. He does finally tag these roaches with the Oracle, starts lasering them down, but there's still a roach in the third that could pop up. Shield battery there, though, is minimizing the damage. At the end of all this, 55 drones have died, 38 probes, and Bly has already achieved his goal. It's not about winning the game, guys. It's about turning the game into an absolute poop shoot. Bly is that one kid who sneaks back into his class in eighth grade giggling with a cheeky look on his face and he's holding something in his hand. And you're like, what are you doing, Michael? What are you doing, mate? And then he pulls it out and he reveals that he's gone to the bathroom, done number two in the bag, and then also poured some water in there and tied it up tight. And you're like, what the fuck? Are you serious, Michael? And then he looks at you, turns the fan in the classroom up to max, and then throws the plastic bag into the ceiling fan. That is Bly's style of StarCraft, and he's achieved that. This game, everyone's covered in flex. It's not a clean, sanitary situation at all. It's not a situation Protoss wants. Muters are coming across the map right now. If you guys didn't have a Michael in your classroom, then um, you probably didn't miss out on anything, um, except for, I guess, uh, character building life experiences. Anyways, uh, let us know what the name of your uh, version of Michael was in your classroom in the comment section, as Hellraiser is going to push. It's actually a pretty scary army, but as long as the roaches keep falling back, he can try to land some big biles. Good micro here by Bly. Good micro. He's kind of forced Hellraiser all in. The muters are clearing the third base. The roaches have cleared the entire natural. Hellraiser's got a fourth base finishing, but he's got no probes. As long as the roach ravager holds on here, Bly will be okay. It's a very scrappy position, but he's forcing Hellraiser to push deep on creep, and deep on creep is where roach ravager excels. The queen can take out one of those oracles drops a few transfusers which means the oracles are still alive Biles trying to hold them back to force the oracles to disengage drones being pulled to the front a new queen pulls over she takes out one of the oracles the other oracle almost going down the units are getting overwhelmed and Bly absolutely messes up game one and manages to take it out very nice win all right well that was a pretty nasty uh game there I love the multi-pronged roaches because what's so common is you wait for tunneling claws, it takes so long to kick in, and it just takes forever to get in there, and by then they've got detection, or they're pushing you with a big army. But I like the way Bly was like, no, 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 I'm going to push with roach speed, distract here so I can get inside the base. Once I'm in the base, I'm going to split into multiple mineral lines, use burrow from there to hit three bases at once, follow that up with the tunneling claws kicking in later to then maneuver those roaches, and then make a muter swap as well. Like It's the layers of just frustration, combined on, of course, blocking your base four times with one drone at the start of the game it totally throws off your build order and a lot of the time i gotta say to understand how annoying it is to play against this sort of style uh you gotta realize that the way you keep zerg in check in any matchup whether you're zerg protoss or terran if you're playing against a zerg you need to be able to be aggressive in order to stop them from surprising you so what do i mean by that because all of zerg production is based around their lava right the way it works is they could be super greedy just every drone goes to lava, build no army, and get way ahead on the economy. Or they could do the other extreme and build nothing but army, no economy. Because Zerg's production all comes from the one building, they can much harder shift into pure worker or pure army, both of which require very different responses. So rather than trying to have perfect scouting at all times in the game, which is very difficult, it's very hard to just see, see everything that's going on, the main way, including at pro level, but it applies to lower levels as well, is you hit timing attacks, you hit pressures. Here come the two adepts, they poke in, here's the oracle getting in there, and you're forcing them to build a mixture of defensive army units and workers, and you're getting scouting at the same time. But that relies, those pressures rely on you getting those adepts at a very sharp timing when you know they're going to be quite useful. The oracle at a useful timing, the glaive adepts at a useful timing. The moment the game gets messed up, your timings start to get a little bit looser, a little bit less refined, because your build's thrown off and your gas is a bit late because you were pulling seven probes to clear up a hatchery block or something like that. So the, the whole flow-on effect that happens here is basically it's harder to be on top of the Zerg and make sure you know what they're doing and they're not getting away with being really greedy or really aggressive, or in Bly's case, often sneaking some very naughty tech, investing in a sneaky burrow 
and a big pack of roaches to get in or a sneaky spire and a mutilisk swap. Now, for now, this is a surprisingly macro-oriented build for Bly, right? This looks like a very standard build. He's just building two queens, four lings, ling speed. This is about as vanilla as it gets. And I can't wait to see how Bly turns this into a Bly build from here. He's not injecting just yet. He's going to go take the purple gas base. Okay, he's going purple gas. Double eject does go down. All right, all right, Bly. Um, usually, because this is double mining on this geyser, right? What I would expect is like a Ravager Ling push. Make a bunch of Ravages, Speedlings, and go for some big push off of two gas. You've got this gas mining, this gas mining, maybe 40 drones. You can maybe even walk queens with it as well. I think that's a very, very powerful push. That's what I would assume, but who knows? For now, the Adept scouting around. You can see how paranoid Hellraiser is. He's got a Stalker in the wall because that's the beefiest unit versus like a Baneling Buster or anything like that. He's scouting for any Lings nearby. He's actually already shading the Adept to the third. So, and he's building a Void Ray as well. So it looks like he really wants the sustained damage of the Void Ray that can stop these cheeky attacks rather than an Oracle that can run out of energy. And he just wants to say, let's just play defensive, play nice and greedy. He's going to try and take a third base here at like 3 minutes 35. This is a very early third and looks like yeah okay so he's queued up an oracle and then third base at 340 void ray is going to take out this overlord there's another overlord behind the natural i would love bly to just hide that overlord off in the top right corner oh probe actually does go down for a zergling very nice little little catch there the void ray oh, you see these units don't have as much vision as long as bly leaves the overlord hidden there it actually might never get spotted so funny hellraiser is looking for it if it ran away he would have found it Bly with the 300 IQ Overlord hide. How clever is that? He's actually hiding it right next to Hellraiser's base where he doesn't expect. <laughs> Link's coming to cancel a pile on that's building. They also keep the oracles pinned back. Notice there's no spores yet. The spores are crazy late for Bly right now. They are insanely late, but because he's been aggressive with a few Zerglings, he's been able to get away with it. Now he's up to five Queens with the sixth one on the way. He's gonna build a spore crawler on each base now to try and back up that defense. Got two queens nearby. If he's quick, he might save the overlord. Oh, no. Prismatic alignment's insane. They kill stuff so quickly. He's going to try and break the tower here as Hellraiser because he thinks there might be a Zerg push through the middle. So he's like, nope, screw that. Second Stargate? Wow, Void Raid 2 Oracle into second Stargate. Hellraiser's playing Sky Toss. And if Bly sends this overlord in, he will see exactly what the tech is super early. So Bly with that sneaky overlord has set himself up to get that information. And the sooner he sends it in, the better. Lings are going in. They're going to take out the probe on that mineral line. Zealot and the Adept are solid for now. And you can see a bit of a little sneaky recall. The Oracle's coming back, seeing this many uh, Zerglings. Hellraise is very, very afraid of Bly and like what sneaky BS he's going to throw. You know what's cool? It's not even a big all in. Bly is just droning up, just using the rich gas. And I think he's just relying on the fact that Hellraiser is going to be nervous. Seeing a hatchery so close, it's usually used to launch or push at you very quickly. The creep being so far up and that sort of stuff. So that's definitely something that uh, he's going to be paranoid about. And look at this, double void ray production gets spotted. So Bly is just like, okay, I'll drop a Hydra in, man. No worries. <laughs> I'm just going to go for Hydras here. Hydras beat void rays pretty hard. Looks like Ling's run in and get two probes, make it three. Just keeping Hellraiser's economy damaged. But Hellraiser does answer with three drone kills there. Not too bad. I think the natural might be the most open base if he can sneak those oracles around the back. Or if he just rotates back down here, actually. Notice how Bly has a tendency to keep all of his queens on one control group, or at least six of them, all of his defensive ones. Uh, seven, actually. Yeah, so he, he basically just A moves his queens back and forwards to where the oracles come in, rather than leaving them super split. There we go. He actually does split two queens in the main, so that's pretty well done. It's going to take a fourth base as well. No Evo chambers, guys. It's just Hydra movement speed, which is the more aggressive upgrade. And he's just going to go straight into Mass Hydra next up. Now, what's the follow-up for Hellraiser? He's going for a Robo. If he gets Colossus out, they actually counter Hydras very well. Void Ray Colossus is such a meme style. Hellraiser, this is... I don't know if Hellraiser always plays like this, because I've seen him play some pretty good macro games, but it seems like when he's facing Bly, he plays a very weird style of Protoss. Bly forces you into the upside down, and before you know it, there's motes of dust floating around you. You're bloody levitating off the floor. There's, you have a pet demogorgon named Bob. You, things are weird. You don't even know what's happening. Like, it's just, it's not your your normal day at StarCraft school for Protoss vs. So, um, he needs a Robo Bay right now if he's going to do that. Yeah, he's, he's going to go Void Ray Colossus. I, I would actually probably think Disruptors is more likely, but either one can work here. The problem is that Hydra attack is already getting ready. Batteries and cannons could help a lot, but the Forge has just started and there's no, there's only one battery there. Void Rays do see these Hydras. I think that's a very important thing. 
for Hellraiser to see. He'd like to catch the rally, catch one or two of these uh, these units on their own, but the Hydras are starting to mass up. Infestation pits on the way, so he's going to try and head towards Hive behind this. Groove Spines does start up. That's going to be the plus one range for those Hydras. And I think that's a, a natural time to push. Also, look at this. The creep's so far forward. He's actually got creep right to his base. Breaks down the rocks, and oh my god, the batteries aren't ready yet. A few slow zealots already getting gunned down. The Void Rays are going to try and fight this. Maybe Stasis Traps help out here, because Hydras are going to want to move forward and focus your Void Rays down. But if you have Stasis Traps, that's going to make it very difficult for them to do that. Cannons are trying to build in a very defensive spot in the mineral line. Oh, those queens, though. Such a big hammer of queens. And as long as they're on creep, they can transfuse, remember. So the ones in the back are able to transfuse right now. The creep is spreading forward, so they're able to move forward with the Hydra Concave combined. And look, he runs forward and just one focus fires. This is what I was talking about. Oh, a stasis trap. There was one stasis trap, but it was a little bit far back. Only get some of them. A lot of the Hydras are actually starting to fall right now. The battery overcharge already got focused down. The batteries are running out. The cannons are a little too far in the back. But you know what? The Void Rays actually cleaned the Hydras. That was a pretty impressive hold so far. The Queens on their own don't have much damage output. And if he can survive until there's another battery overcharge ready. Oh, the Hydra's are about to pop out. The Hydra's are about to pop out. The Disruptor goes on top. Hellraiser with an amazing hold. And it was Disruptor Void Ray. If he keeps building Disruptors, he'll be good. He's got two Void Rays building right now. No Disruptor. Hellraiser's got to keep on doing that. He's trying to push this back as much as he can. But he's got to be careful. He's killing the Queens. He doesn't want to lose any of these Void Rays. And look at all that damage. That is amazing damage coming out of Hellraiser. Round two is going to come, though. Bly is all in. 58 probes versus 75. Hellraiser needs to pull back. He's not expecting another wave to be so quick, but with the creep highway right there, it is. And look, the disruptor shot gets baited out. Dodged. He can just go in. There's nothing to defend. There's two cannons. Battery overcharge is ready. That can activate. Oh, the Void Rays need to move, move over the batteries and fight there. As long as the Void Rays fight with the battery overcharge, I think they still have a chance. The Hydra count is not that high just yet, but the batteries are very low on juice. And if he can bait out the overcharge, that could be amazing. He's actually going Colossus's Hellraiser. He wants the sustained damage. The Disruptor did get focused down. And the Void Ray count is at nine. Two more building. Remember, no upgrades for the Roach Hydra. There's plus one air weapons for the air. This is such a weird game. I love this matchup. I gotta, I gotta find more games of these, these country mates. Uh, I believe Hellraiser and Bly both from the Ukraine. Playing, and they've clearly played many times before to the point where they've developed their own weird sub-meta of the matchup. The Nexus does go down. Roach Hydra with a beautiful snipe. You've got to get the damage done soon. Losing the fourth doesn't matter for Hellraiser. Hellraiser just needs to make sure he doesn't die. He rebuilds the fourth instantly. If he can get a few more cannons, he's basically unbreakable. Hydra's coming forward. you got to watch out for those Hydra's. Remember, battery overcharge is available, and those batteries are all gathering more energy. A full energy shield battery can heal 300 shields, which is almost as much as an Archon. So it's very, very useful. Oh, Disruptor! Disruptor! Oh, no! Hellraiser! Okay, wait, wait, wait. That's very scary for Bly to commit in like that. But look at that. He spreads his units. Only two Hydra's go down. A few Roaches and Hydra's get in there. The Void Rays and the Colossus move into the base, but now they're away from the shield batteries on the left. So it's actually kind of nice positioning the Roach Hydra in the natural actually doing some decent damage on the probes. They get three of them. Uh, the Void Ray Colossus trying to hang on. A new Disruptor is building right now. Hellraiser is so ahead on supply and even on army supply, but Void Rays do not do well unless they're fighting with static. And Hellraiser is up against the wall right now. He's just in such a weird position. And Bly's just keeping him on the ropes, doing nothing but massing Hydras. Hive is on the way as well as a few more gases. So Bly is thinking about trying to get to Vipers, which will be amazing. Parasitic Bombs will ruin those Void Rays. Abducts will ruin the Colossus. If you can get the Colossus, that'd be big. Hellraiser has got to stay out of range. He doesn't have extended Thermal Lance, though. That Colossus having trouble with the thickness of his beam. It's not quite got Viagra yet. Oh, another Disruptor rallies in. That's three Disruptors that have died this game. If they'd stayed alive, this would be so different. But look at that. Bly split. Hydra says you need to come into the open if you come into the open that's where I'll take the fight Hydra's on the bottom left Hydra's on the right and Hydra's run up in the mineral line they get a void ray they start to take out all the probes Hellraiser's in trouble remember he's only got one gateway he can't warp in units to defend he's playing this weird side oh his Colossus goes out and dies void rays do defend on the left with battery overcharge but the Hydra ball in the middle is breaching his third base his natural is getting cleaned up in terms of the Hydra's there there's a few void rays but not enough to deal with that many Hydralisks the void rays from the left they're gonna try to come back to the top but Hellraiser gets overwhelmed by just 58 drones now 65 drone mass hydralisk oh my god i thought his first hold was so good but bly just forces the game into the upside down and shows that he is indeed the vecna of this dark dark upside down weird 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 world thanks for watching hope you guys enjoyed that game thanks for watching catch you next time goodbye and good night